I'm Kat from the Remote Home Travel website Wandering Bird where we share practical tips and road trips for the UK and Europe. Today I want to answer a question from David in our Facebook group who wants to know about the legalities of wild camping in the UK. If you want to join our Facebook group the link is in the video notes below. Just click on that and I'll see you in there. Now before I start, if you want to get more motorhome tips and tricks, be sure to subscribe to our channel and click the little bell to be notified when a new video is available to you. Also, if you want to find out how we find places to wild camp with our motorhome, how we stay safe, how we figure out water and power off grid and all of that fun stuff, we've got an ebook telling you all of our tricks and you can find the link to that in the video notes below. A quick word on COVID, I am not by any stretch of the imagination encouraging anybody to break any laws which may be in place right now. So this is a general overview of the topic for when it is safe for us to all get back in our van and travel again. Lastly, I know the term wild camping deeply offends some people when it comes to motorhomes and camper vans. So by all means, call it free parking or informal camping or wild parking, whatever makes you happy. The laws and the regulations are exactly the same, whatever you call it. But for us, we're going to stick with the term wild camping because I think that is where it's caused some confusion for people. So let's dig into David's question and forgive me, I'm going to look at my notes on a fairly regular basis because a lot of the information I'm going to give you are laws and codes and I want to make sure that I get the information correct. So apologies if I look down every now and then, but I will do my very best to keep it to a minimum. Right, David's question. David asks, could anyone explain to me what is right? I always thought it was illegal to wild camp in England, but it was okay in Scotland. I've just been reading the Camping and Caravanning magazine and they say it's illegal to wild camp in any motor vehicle in Scotland, as well as England. Are they right? It's a great question, David, and I know that a lot of people in the group had similar questions and concerns. And there is a lot of confusion about this, so I'm hoping very much to put all that to rest today. I will do my best. So let's start with the easy bit. Um, you are right in exactly what you say. Wild camping is illegal in England and Wales. In fact, Scotland is the only country in the UK where wild camping is still legal. However, that doesn't apply to motorised vehicles. And this is where a lot of the confusion comes out. There are three different codes or laws that we need to pay attention to as motorhome and camper van owners. The first is the Scottish Outdoor Access Code. And these are in no order of importance, by the way. They're literally just the order that I've written them down in my notes. So the Scottish Outdoor Access Code. They say that wild camping is lightweight, done in small numbers and only for two or three nights in any one place. But it non-motorised recreation and does not extend to activities that are based on the use of a vehicle, such as sleeping in cars, campers, vans or caravans. There is no legal right to park beside the road overnight, but there may be no objection in some instances, so extra care is needed. Then we've got the Land Reform Act of 2003. And the Land Reform Act is a Scottish Parliament Act that secures public access rights for unenclosed land in Scotland. The part of that act that applies to motorised vehicles says that where you park your vehicle is important not to cause any damage or create an obstruction by blocking an entrance to a field, a road or a building, making it difficult for anyone else to use a road or a track, you must have regard for the safety of others, you should not damage the verge and you must use a car park if there is one nearby. Then lastly, we need to look at the Road Traffic Act of 1988, which says, it is an offence to drive a motor vehicle without lawful authority on land of any description, which is not part of a road, a footpath or a bridleway. It also states that you can drive a vehicle off road away from a public road for the purposes of parking, as long as you stay within 15 yards of a public road. But, and here's the but, you still need the landowner's permission. Most unmetalled roads, unfenced land and beaches are private property and you don't have the right to just park up wherever you like unless you have verbal or written agreement from the landowner. The use of parking of camper vans or cars on roads and laybys is subject to the road traffic legislation and regulations 
off-road parking of a motor vehicle on verges or adjacent land without permission is unlawful. There's also some confusion over the validity of no overnight parking signs, but I'm not going to get into that right now. So, I've just thrown an awful lot of laws at you, and all of those sound awful for any of us who really enjoy wild camping. So let's break this down into practical application. The fact of the matter is that most land in all of the UK is owned by somebody. It's all private land and we do not just have the right in a motorised vehicle to turn up and park. In reality, and this is where things get fudgy, wild camping is generally tolerated as an overnight stop only. Exactly like truck drivers um, are tolerated to stop in a, in a lay-by so that they can get some sleep whilst they're driving. It is intended to be a sleeping place, not somewhere that you get out an awning and a load of chairs and make camp for a few days. And that is where I think some of the issues have arisen from because traditionally Scotland was a lot more tolerant of wild camping in motorhomes and camper vans. And now they've created these specific routes like the NC500 and the Southwest 300 and now there's one called the Heart 200. If you want more details of them, I'll link to our blog post below that shows you roughly where they all are. There are five really amazing scenic routes in Scotland that everyone should drive. But they have become incredibly popular and the infrastructure just is not there to deal with the sheer mass of people who want to go up and people who then want to wild camp. They're a campsite and they're a beautiful campsite right on the beaches. But a lot of people like the idea of wild camping. We, do, we love wild camping, especially in Scotland. It's absolutely stunning. But there's so many people now and there are so many inconsiderate people that I think a lot of the locals have just become a lot less tolerant than they used to be. So these stories about Scotland being amazing for wild camping it still is if you go at the right time of year and if you're really considerate, but most people go in the height of summer and they're not very considerate. And that's where I think we're getting a lot of the problems coming on because legally you are allowed to be moved on. The locals and the, the owners of the land do have the right to say move on. You don't have the right to just park up. So what do we do? If you want to stay 100% within the letter of the law, use campsites. If you are considerate and you stay well away from buildings and well away from um, blocking people's view of say the beach for an example, then there are plenty of places where you can stay in a secluded woodland area or a car park that's off the beaten track somewhere um, and stay overnight but we're talking sort of arrive at six seven o'clock at night and leave by eight nine o'clock in the morning i'm not saying you can stay there for three days and that's where i think a lot of people have got confused wild camping is literally just somewhere to stay for the night so there are a couple of tips that we have to continue the goodwill with the local scottish landowners one is to not park as groups. If you see a motorhome or camper van parked up, don't park next to them. Go find your own little spot somewhere so that there aren't huge clusters. Always, always take your litter with you and your waste with you. Now, if you are going to do your business outside, make sure you're well away from a water source for a start so nowhere near a stream or river or wherever you happen to be parked up and also make sure you bury it but take your toilet paper with you you don't bury toilet paper because animals dig it up and then they spread it all around again and stuff there are places in everywhere in, in the uk where you can pay to empty your waste and your toilet facilities I believe one of the major clubs, and off the top of my head, I can't remember which one, I think it's the Camping and Caravanning Club, but it could be the Caravan and Motorhoming Club. They have a deal where you can pay, you see the five or seven pounds, um, in order to just turn up and use their facilities. And we've done that in several places. We've just turned up at a campsite, even an independent campsite, and said, we'll pay just to empty our waste and get fresh water. And you can do that all over the place. So, take your waste with you, Take all of your litter with you. If you are going to light a fire 
and we have a lot of mixed feelings about lighting fires because we've seen people just put like disposable barbecues on the ground and it leaves these huge scorch patches and nobody wants that. So we always recommend um, getting a fire that's off the ground. We, I'll put a link to it in the notes, we've got a brilliant one that's on like legs um, and we can use that as a, bar as a barbecue but you can also have it as a little fire. But if you're somewhere in the middle of summer and it's really dry, I wouldn't recommend starting a fire. You do not want to be the reason that you cause an enormous problem. So use fires with caution. Also, if you start putting a fire outside of your van and you start putting seats out, you're camping. And although we call it wild camping, it's only supposed to be overnight parking. So you've got to be really, really careful with where you are. I don't think we've ever, she says, I don't think we've ever had a fire in the UK. Europe is a lot more tolerant in certain places. Um, and Europe, we do it quite a lot when we're miles away from anywhere. The UK is not as tolerant. So I would say be very, very careful if you're going to start sitting outside your vehicle and getting barbecues and chairs and things out. A couple more things to be aware of are there are places around Scotland where they have set up um, systems to make it easier for people to find places to park. So the um, Loch Lomond National Park, you need to have a permit so that you can stay overnight in there. And that helps them keep the area clean. It helps them create revenue for the area. And that's one of the big things. If you're gonna go up to an area, any area, and you're planning to wild camp, for goodness sake, go shop at you know, local shops or you know have a coffee at a cafe or put some money back into the economy i think another thing that really upsets locals all these people turn up and they want everything for free they want to enjoy the area for free so we try really hard to put some money back into the economy in whatever way we can so i mentioned lot lamont um, another area or place that's done a similar system is the Isle of Turi, and forgive me while I read this, but they've got their own guidelines for camper vans and they've created overnight parking spaces. Uh, apparently they have pictures, special pictures, or I think they've called them croft sites, just for camper vans and motorhomers. So you can say that, I believe, I've never used them, but I have been told by people who have that they're almost like airs. And I think Scotland have created quite a few what I would describe as airs, which are basically approved motorhome parking places. One really, really important thing that I want to make sure is very clear is on a lot of the roads, let's use the NC500 as an example, you have single track road and then passing places. Do not park in a passing place. It's not a lay-by, it's somewhere so that people can get past. If you've parked there, it's, you're going to block the road. So be really aware of where you're stopping. Also be aware of the habitat and the signs around you. If you know, there are no overnight parking signs, we always obey them and move on and find somewhere else. And I'm not getting into whether they're legal or not. That's fine. So one last thing is to not be inconsiderate. Don't play loud music. Don't have a group of you all sitting around and you know laughing loudly until crazy clock at night try to be as discreet as possible and as respectful of the fact that you're there on somebody's goodwill as you possibly can i've had lots more questions on the practicalities of what we do with water and waste and how we find places and how we stay safe and all of that stuff so don't forget you can grab our ebook in the link below and that will walk you through all of that stuff in an easy step-by-step -step way to follow it and that's for the uk and for europe if you want to go wild camping in europe so i hope that helped answer your question david thank you for asking it it was a really good question if you found this video useful by all means give us a thumbs up and we'd love it if you subscribe if you'd like to see more don't forget to head to our website wandering-bird.com we've got loads of itineraries for scotland and england and wales places that you can go and general motorhome travel tips and ideas for the UK and for Europe. So I hope that you'll find all of those useful. I think that's it from me. I hope you all have a wonderful week and take care, stay safe, and I'll see you very soon. Bye-bye.